It's wonderful to be here, incredibly humbling um, and a great honour, obviously, to present um, very briefly work from my group at the University of Sydney. And I've changed the title to emphasise some more recent work that um, I think is very exciting. Phonons, the next wave. So I'm going beyond photons and I'm going to talk about phonons to create integrated circuits that transform the way we manipulate sense and integrate with the world. Um, this work is uh, supported by the Australian Research Council and the specific research that I'm going to describe is also supported by the US Air Force um, research. So let me um, provide some context and start by saying that in the context of information, the defining technologies of our era are clearly electronics, fibre optics, photonics, and I'll say more about that, and wireless communications, and I'll come back to that. My research is in photonics, which is an area of real national strength. It's um, clearly an area that we have outstanding researchers. Some of them are in the room today, many of my uh, colleagues who are fellows of the Academy, and my colleagues in Kudos, Professor Yuri Kifshar, Professor Ross McFedrin, who's in the audience, and Professor Min Gu. Every Australian person in business has been changed by photonic science. 10% of the economy is directly tied to optical and photonic technology. Lasers are the linchpin of a $7 trillion industry. Um, and this has all been driven by Moore's law, which is driving computational processing, which is in turn driving the bandwidth demands. Every time you make um, an internet search, um, that data is going through a device that was uh, productised, commercialised by our collaborators, Finisar, in downtown Sydney. So what are we doing? Kudos has uh, created uh, what I'd like to say is a revolutionary photonic integration platform based on nanophotonics. And um, this um, simple schematic illustrates the idea. On the left-hand side, you can see the canonical optical table that might be sitting in Professor Joss Bland Hawthorne's laboratory at the University of Sydney. And that table has on it lasers, detectors, diffractive elements, mirrors, beam splitters, all of the building blocks of um, optics experiments. What we've done is integrated that onto a chip, a chip that's the size of my thumbnail, a chip that is probably made in silicon. It's using the semiconductor microelectronics industry to print all of those building blocks onto a chip that ultimately will sit in my smartphone. Okay, and you can see on the right-hand side my postdoc holding up a chip for a recent um, uh, media release. So photonic chips are now a reality. They're part of our ecosystem. This is a technology um, that is global. It's been integrated into a number of commercial systems around the world, and it's an area where Australia has really been a global leader. Kudos is uh, developing um, a number of technologies that are now being productised, and that's exciting for growing our ecosystem. And in that context, I'd just like to acknowledge um, the seven universities that come together to form the Kudos program. So to give you a quick overview, and then I'm going to talk about phononics, um, photonic chips have been a wonderful platform for new science and technology across a whole range of areas that are relevant to Australian science. For example, we have now ultra-compact sources of quantum light, single photons on demand at room temperature that are the basis for next generation quantum technologies. We are building on-chip instrumentation that can analyse ultra-broadband digital and analogue waveforms with bandwidths that are hundreds of times more than existing commercially available instrumentation that might sit on a table and cost $125,000 and weigh 50 kilograms. We're developing on-chip um, sources of mid-infrared light and spectroscopy that's going to allow us to probe the molecular fingerprint to detect carbon molecules in the atmosphere in a chip that's integrated into the same silicon chip that is sitting in your smartphone. So we're imagining, and I like to say the smartphone, the iPhone 10, will have photonics integrated into the chip and you'll be able to detect pollutants in the atmosphere using optics 
that's built into the same silicon chip. And we're discovering new regimes of nonlinear optics for the first time on the length scale of hundreds of nanometers, we're accessing regimes of light matter interactions that are completely new, opening up new fields of nonlinear optics. So let me now step back and uh, segue to um, my more recent research by just reminding you of the history. So we have all lived through the microelectronics integration revolution that has provided and is providing unprecedented computational power. And over the last decade, photonic integration and optoelectronic integration has and is revolutionising communications, providing unprecedented processing power in data centres and communication centres. But these uh, chips really are brains without hands. What we've missed and lost as we've developed these amazing processes is the ability to manipulate the world the nanoscale. So I like to say they're brains without hands. So the next phase of our research, which I am very excited about, is that for the first time we're bringing phonons. Phonons are quanta of sound. In fact, phonons are also relevant in biological systems, as I've been lectured to recently by one of my colleagues. Um, biological systems deal with phonons um, all the time. You're hearing phonons right now as I speak to you creating chips that become active agents of the world that open up these integration capabilities to all areas of technology. So let me just take you through that journey uh, very briefly. So phonons couple to the world. As I said, um, phonons are the quantized mechanical vibration sound, and we're all familiar with sound. You can hear me when um, you're taking images of um, um, your unborn child, you're relying on ultrasound, which deals with um, megahertz frequencies. At very, very high frequencies, interestingly enough, uh, phonons manifest as heat and is particularly important in uh, technologies like photovoltaics and the semiconductor industry. We've stumbled onto a new regime that is referred to as hypersound. Hypersound deals with acoustic frequencies that have frequencies of gigahertz, as fast as the clock speed in your computer. Because the frequencies are so fast, and this is sound at the end of the day, the speed of sound is the same as it is, roughly speaking, in um, atmosphere. The wavelength of their sound wave is comparable to the wavelength of light, and it's comparable to structures and wires that we build on integrated circuits. So, the phonon, the elemental unit of mechanical vibration. It is the sound wave analogue to the photon of light. We're talking about hypersonic waves that have frequencies tens of thousands of times ultrasonic waves. And for the first time, we're going to control and harness hypersonic waves, phonons at the nanoscale in symphony with light and electrons. So we're building nanowires for sound. These nanowires are integrated into the optoelectronic circuit to provide new functionality to create an integration platform that is active and can manipulate the world at the micro scale. And there are numerous examples that I could talk about. I'm going to focus on one very striking example. And I can't see the timer. Oh, there it is. Good. So it turns out, for the reasons that I alluded to, photonics, phononics, sorry, Joss, we had a conversation about making sure I get the phononics and photonics because we often stumble across these terms ourselves. Phononics bridges optical and RF. RF is radio waves, microwaves. It bridges the radio frequency in the optical domain, connecting information transport by light with information processing in the RF. The reason is intriguing that, as I said, the wavelength of this hypersound is comparable to the wavelength of light and at the same time, the frequency of this sound wave is comparable to the frequencies that we deal with in wireless communications, in radar, in electronic warfare. For the first time, we can bridge these two domains of information processing to com create completely new functionalities that have performance that is well beyond what is available and it can be put on a chip. 
So let me um, just uh, take you through that. And at the same time, it turns out that on-ship integration with photonics provides immunity to electromagnetic interference. So in the context of uh, defence applications, there's a lot of interest in this uh, technology. So let me just take you through um, some recent work. This is um, collaboration between my group at the University of Sydney and a wonderful group at the Australian National University, led for many years by Professor Barry Luther Davies, Professor Steve Madden and Duk Choi, and this has been a real pillar for the KUDOS program, um, published um, 150 papers together in the last decade. On the right-hand side, you can see um, a measurement of uh, one of our notch filters, so the details are not important, but the punchline is that we have, for the first time, a broadband RF device that can be tuned from 1 gigahertz to 50 gigahertz in a microsecond with an extinction that is 50 dB, and the energy efficiency is orders of magnitude below um, technologies that are being commercialised. And so there's a lot of excitement now in a number of um, areas of society, wireless communications, clearly electronic warfare um, as the basis of uh, technologies that help protect our assets and personnel. Radio astronomy is always a very interesting application that we enjoy talking to our colleagues at the University of Sydney about and satellite communications. So this is what it's all about. This is my final slide. It's taking um, components hardware that sits on a desk the size of a very large 1995 desktop laptop computer, miniaturising it onto a chip that is um, integrated into your smartphone and, as I said, part of the iPhone X. I want to acknowledge my uh, wonderful group here in the photo standing out uh, in front of the amazing Sydney Nanoscience Hub at the University of Sydney that was opened last month. This is a $150 million state-of-the-art nanoscience building, and um, if you're in town, please send me an email. I'll be happy to show you around. And I want to acknowledge Kudos um, and also just draw attention to Kudos Technology, which is our um, umbrella organisation for spinning off this technology. Thank you very much. Thanks, Are there any questions or comments? Okay, maybe let me ask you a question. In terms of fabrication issues, are there any issues in terms of uh, uh, these uh, phononics uh, being affected by the roughness and the fabricated nanostructures and things like that? Yeah, that's a good question. There's a lot of science in now completely reimagining integrated circuits. So we've spent the last 10 years understanding how to guide photons in nanowires in terms of surface roughness, compatibility with CMOS, and now we have to completely reimagine that integrated circuit in terms of hypersound in CMOS. Um, right now, we have some confidence these hypersound phonons um, can find. They, to some extent, behave like light, except that light and sound don't like to be in the same place. So at this length scale for these frequencies, light and sound don't want to be at the same place. So we actually have to be very creative about how we design the wires themselves to harness the interaction between these two different waves. There's a hand, please. Okay, please. Uh, I was just wondering what type of material the nanowires would be made from typically, you know, for the phone on nanowires. Yeah, good question, what material? And there is tension because on the one hand, the global semiconductor industry is silicon, crystalline silicon. So you're always pushing towards silicon-based devices because then you can essentially outsource your manufacturing to a foundry in Taiwan, and it's free, essentially. But as I was hinting at, light and sound don't necessarily want to be in the same place. So we have to come up with very novel approaches that might require hybrid integration, combining a glass, for example, with silicon to create a wire that guides light and sound at the nanoscale so they can interact. But good question. Last question, Dan. Apologise if I've misunderstood, but when you gave the presentation, you, you spoke about previous products being brains with no hands, and so I had the impression uh, that the phononics were going to be providing the hands. But how I didn't get... Yeah, I didn't I, understand that's how. right. So... 
The other example, which um, is a much more concrete example of the hands, Phenonix provides us manipulation on the chip, allows us to actuate, if you imagine lab on a chip, microfluidics, Phenonix can actually actuate, agitate, manipulate fluids on the micro nanoscale. So the phononics is like um, you've got moving parts because you've got a sound wave that carries momentum and can push, but you've got no moving parts. So we've been saying moving parts without moving parts. So you can manipulate on the chip. This particular example, you're harnessing that sound wave to bridge optical and RF. The broader concept is that you have now manipulation on the chip integrated into the, the, the substrate itself. And my colleagues who are more in the life sciences are very interested in the idea that you can manipulate fluids on a chip to create a lab on a chip that is in your smartphone, not a chip in a lab, which is what those technologies usually are because they sit on a bench top surrounded by all this hardware because moving fluids on that scale is very, very hard. Phonons will allow that to happen. On that note, could you please join me to thank Ben once again?